Honestly, it's not easy to say what I do. I'd rather show you. And what I do is, I think, cutting edge in terms of being very ancient. It arises out of some awakening experiences and a near-death experience. And many years of training with coaches and healers and shamans and charlatans. So it's not that those experiences became this thing where now suddenly I heal people and I have these magical abilities. However, those experiences opened me up to be able to hold a certain frequency and that allowed me to learn these experiences in a deep way and to embody this non-judgmental space during praxis. Now I'm not saying I'm awakened to the point where there's no judgment ever. I, I would not claim that. I can enter a non-dual, a non-dual, non-judgmental space on cue and that's very important because that's what one needs when one is attempting to heal. Most people, I will tell you, they project so much onto the person they are trying to heal that the healing fails. Meaning, here's an example. I was doing coaching and healing with someone, a woman who had, who was in an affair and she had, her sister had cancer and there were all these things. And many people would just say, get out of that affair, it's causing all this, these problems for you. Isn't that presumptuous? <laughs> yes, get out of that affair if that's what your highest life path calls for. However, that's not really my call. What is my purpose as a healer, as a person who's facilitating transformation? It's not necessarily to uh, impose my moral worldview on someone. It's to bring people to living most fully and what's between you and life. Now it's possible that for some people this thing called an affair, whatever that is, which it's, it's frowned upon biblically and, and it's more acceptable in the nomenclature of an affair. An affair sounds something like something exciting versus like adultery or fornication or whatever, whatever the biblical term would be. Now it's an affair. They're like, that's some, I got something going on. I didn't have anything going on before. I was simply married. So that's the beauty of this work. And how can, like I I was working with a family once and when the father was abusive and the child was abused and they're both heroes. <laughs> well, they were both victims in the story actually. So we transport them both into heroes through various stages of uh, Lever levels of awareness and different kinds of storytelling tactics and somatic release and then in the end they're both heroes I can tell you that it's it's not easy for most people to think that way they're like Democrats are bad or Republicans are good or the abuser is bad the child is good and you know there are there are rights and wrongs there are moral compasses and such there are eternal truths I think we just don't know what they are. So in order to suspend judgment and let people actually heal their stuff, we need to sometimes sit back and watch. And I, I continually uh, meditate on that Lao Tse quote, practice not doing and everything falls into place because I've seen that to be so true and nothing to be as profound or as powerful as that. If you look at it even as healing, part of healing the physical organism, water fasting can be quite powerful. You, you're taking away what is getting into the system that's corroding it so the system, the intelligence, the natural intelligence can resurface. Water fasting can be powerful. What's even more fast, powerful is dry fasting, just not eating or drinking. I did a seven day dry fast not long ago. Practice not doing, that's doing even less because you can't be quite as active and no, no water can get in the system either. Like parasites, bacteria, viruses, they all require the presence of water. So that's interesting. You, <laughs> we do too. However, uh, there's this state that happens in the body when your, bo your body gets through the second acidotic crisis and it starts to create endogenous water. Like it's this living water that flows from the center of you. And that's a, that's a scientific fact from my perspective and it's also a beautiful metaphor because 
practice not doing and everything falls into place. As Steiner would say, there's there's human uh, wisdom and there's divine wisdom. He says, the humans are so proud that they made paper and paper spread wisdom all over the world. And paper allowed us to sh print books and share all these things. And he's like, the wasp made paper thousands of years before that. The wasp made paper out of the same out of the same substance, the wasp, you know, out of the divine wisdom made the paper. So when you practice not doing, that sort of wisdom is free to rise to the surface. Now, that doesn't mean you can live never doing anything, obviously. And it doesn't mean you can uh, bypass your responsibility. It just means sometimes just being in a room with someone, their life starts to heal. You don't have to do that much. You can listen fully. Perhaps their story's never been listened to. Is that doing or not doing? I think it's practicing not doing. Like listening without... Because you'll leap to conclusions and you'll want to fix this thing. Oh, do this or that. Do point or point A. Blah, 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 blah. Watch these voices come and go. Listen to their story come and go. Hold the place of their story with compassion so you can get on the other side of it and try to understand it. Now, there's an aramonic influence in digital conversation where people don't really know how to do this. Like look at the comments for this video and there will likely be some comments that are negative. Like people are so lonely and desperate. They go post negative comments on things. They don't, they have no awareness of, and they don't even know the person that's just, you know, feel empathy and compassion for those people. That's, that can be perceived as sad. And I want to show you like, that's also the opposite of practicing, not doing, I'm going to go put my, hang my opinion all over the world. It's like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang my opinion on every tree I walk by. Bad tree, good tree, bad tree, good tree. You know, throwing away life force without creating anything. You can re-harness that life force and put it towards something powerful and healing. And this, this thing about focusing energy towards something, that can heal any wound. So I don't necessarily intentionally focus like rays of energy toward people usually. Though I can see that if I put my energy on someone in terms of awareness, consciousness, etc., they start to heal. Now, how is that possible? Now, I used to do more work, like I had to do more. If there's more value, you have to do more stuff. So I'd, you know, push on the muscles, move the bones, push on the tissue, have them push me back, like a lot of doing to kind of burn through the fight or flight energy, to push on the thigh till someone, you know, could touch into the fear of their mother and then tears would flow, etc. And that's all very powerful. However, uh, lately, I've realized that doing less is doing more, and uh, that's that can be a profound lesson for anyone. So, um, just keep that in mind. Practice not doing, and everything falls into place. Where can you put that in place? Meditating too. That's not doing. Sometimes you get a moment of silence. I'm going to fill this with an audio book. I'm going to fill this with music. I'm going to learn a language. Blah 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 blah. And all that sort of running around in circles with chickens, <laughs> the, the headless chickens of the world, that's not necessarily helping anyone. So uh, meditating is literally just sitting there. And I think there's a balance in humans where it's really healthy to move a lot and it's really healthy to move not at all. And the more you train yourself in each of those, the more you can embody the full spectrum of what it means to be a beautiful, empowered human in this world. <laughs> so... Um, Thank you so much. I'm Stephen Button. If you have a question about something you're trying to heal, uh, put it in the comments. And when I get on here, I will see what I can do. Thank you for listening.